Hello friends, welcome back to the another video and in this video we are going to talk about CSS positions. Often I have seen that CSS positions are little confusing if we don't understand them well. The CSS positions set the position of the element on the document. We will see all five types of CSS positions, static, relative, absolute, fixed and sticky. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you everything about CSS positions that you need to know and you can apply CSS positions in your projects like CSS experts. So make sure you watch the complete video. Also, if you are new, then please check out my HTML and CSS crash course. I will add the links in the description below. Also, make sure that you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, so I already have the HTML boilerplate code and the next thing I am going to do is I will create a div and I'm going to give a class of parent to it and inside it I'm going to create an h1 and I will add a parent as text in it. After that I will create a div and I'm going to give a class of child1 and I need three divs. Okay, I will add child1 in it and I will just change it to child 2 and this to child 3 and I will add child 3 here and I will add child 2 here. Alright, so now you can see that when I save it I have some default styles which I have returned. So let me walk you through the styles. The first one is the universal selector. I used it just to remove the default margin and padding of the browser. Then for the child 1, 2, 3, I have given some spacing between it using padding and margin. For parent, I have given a border of 5 pixel and some background color and some spacing with padding and margin. And for each of the child, I have used some random background colors so that we can see them on the screen. Okay, so, so the first thing we are going to discuss is the position static. But for the position static, you can think as by default, every element or every HTML element you use has a position static to it. And if you want to see that, let me add a position static to all my four child and I'll save it. When I save it, you see that nothing changed on the screen. So what is this position static is all about? So if I want to see that whether the position static is actually applied to this child elements or not, then you can see you can click on the inspect and then you can click on the compute and in the compute you have a filter and in the filter if I write position, then you can see that there is a position static which is applied to all my four child elements. But when you applied these position static, there's nothing changed. Everything is still the same. So you can think that by default, every element is having a position static, whether you apply it or whether you don't apply it, they all will be positioned in the same way it is written in the HTML document. For example, you can see that we have a parent, then we have an H1 parent and below H1 parent, we have three children's, which is child one, child two and child three. And all the child three are rendered on the are rendered on the browser in the same way it is placed in the HTML. So so this is was all about the position static. The next position is the position relative. So I will just remove this and I'm going to use position relative on the child 2 and I add the position relative. But when I add the position relative nothing is changed then what is the difference between the position static and position relative? But the key point to notice here is when you add a position relative to any element, you get extra four properties to add on that element. And those extra four properties are the top, left, bottom and right. And by giving the values to these top, bottom, left and right, you can move the position of the element on the screen. So let's take a look on it and let me apply left to my second child with 40 pixel and I will save it. So now you can see that when I apply the 40 pixel, 
it actually moved from its position to 40 pixel on the left hand side okay now let me apply a bottom of 20 pixel to it i will add a bottom of 20 pixel and i will save it then you can see that now the element is moved from its bottom position a 20 pixel so let's take a look on the inspect element and let's change the values so this is the 20 pixel and if i change it more you can see that now the position element is moving from its position and if i change the left then it will move on the left hand side but you can see that the element when you are changing the position of the element it is overlapping to the other elements so the element can overflow the other elements so this is was the position relative but we actually don't give top left much on the position relative elements we usually use this position relative element in a context with an element which is having a position absolute applied to it let me show you how this context work actually so i will remove this now and i will come back to my initial state now i'm going to apply a position absolute to my child one okay so i will apply a position absolute and when i apply a position absolute you will see that there is a drastic change on the screen so you notice here that when i applied a position absolute my child element which is the child one is actually taken out of the document flow and now there is no existence of this child one on the document flow because it is taken out of it that's the reason why it is overlapped on the child two and the child two has shifted to the child one position and the child one is on top of the child two so this is one of the difference of position relative and position absolute that when you apply a position relative to any element it is not taken out of the document flow so let me give a bottom of zero pixel and when i save you can see oh sorry i have returned this bottom not bottom okay and now i have saved it and you can see that the child one is moved out of the parent one box and it's went to the bottom of the screen why it went actually bottom of the screen and why it did not went to the bottom of my parent so when you apply a position absolute and then you apply the properties of top left bottom right it will first look on its parent and it will check whether its parent is having a position relative to it or not if it has a position relative to its parent it, then it will apply its position based on its parent but if it doesn't find its parent having a position relative it will check for one more higher parent and in this way it it will try to find out all the parents with a position relative and if it doesn't find any of the parent having a position relative then it will take its position from the body itself which is our document itself so that is the reason why the child one when i applied bottom zero it it went straight to the its parent from its parent and it went straight to the body and that's the why it is on the bottom but if i want this child one to take its position relative to its parent itself then i need to apply a position relative to its parent which is the parent so i will add a position relative and i'll save it now you can see that my child one is taking bottom of zero pixel from the parent element which is the gray box so this is the position absolute so position absolute we usually use in a context with its parent which is having a position relative now i can move this element anywhere wherever i want i can have a right of zero then it will go to the right and now it is on the right zero and a zero from the bottom similarly if i apply position to the child three then it will have a position absolute and if i want to have a top of zero then it will go to the zero of the parent and if i remove the position relative from the parent then they are going to take in reference with the body tag or the document now you can see the child one is bottom zero and right zero from the parent that is the body and the child three is position topped zero with the body 
so this was position absolute you always use position absolute in connection with the parent you so your parent should have a position relative if you want it and if it doesn't find position relative to any of its parent then it will take its position relative to the body itself the, the next position is the position fixed so let me have a position fix so what i will do i'm going to yep so for the child one i'm going to make it position fixed and i'll save it and when i save it you can see that the element it's still at its position where it was in on this position absolute so what is this difference between the position absolute and the position fixed the key thing here to notice is when you make an element position fix it will be fixed at its position even though you scroll your page so on this page i cannot scroll it because i don't have a scroll so let me put a scroll on the page i am going to give a height of 800 pixel and i'll save it so now you can see that the height of the page is now increased and just just take a notice on the child 3 which is a position absolute and take a look on the child 1 which is position fixed so when i scroll my page the child 3 actually moves with the scroll it actually moves with the scroll but you will see that the child 1 is still fixed at its own position it will not move with your page document so that is the key difference between a position absolute and a position fixed so you use position fix on the elements uh, most of the websites you have seen that uh, you they have a position fix with uh, either they will have a contact form on the corner of the page with the fixed position which will always be displayed whether you scroll your page or not or the other example of the position fixed is uh, uh, you have a long scroll on the page and in the bottom you will have a small arrow which will says go back to top and which will be always fixed on your left hand side uh, sorry on your right hand side so when you click on it you can scroll back to the page so these are two places where we usually use the position fixed the last one is the position sticky uh, let me show you some i need to change a code little bit to have a position sticky so i have a boilerplate code here and i am just going to paste that boilerplate code so that we don't waste much time and i'll save it so now you can see i have added some content and I have a navigation bar and I'm going to style this navigation bar a little bit so that okay I have a navigation bar I'm going to give a background of 777 all right and then I'm going to have a padding of 20 pixel it'll be fine and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a nav ul and I'm going to have a list type none and then I will have nav ul sorry ul li and actually I'm creating a navigation bar so that I can show you uh, how this position sticky is used so for the nav ul li we need to have a display inline and then I need these to be in the center so I will align them in center and I need to have some margin that is i need some spacing between it on the left hand side and on the right hand side all right and now i will just remove this position absolute from the child 3 because we don't want this anymore so i'm going to comment it out so it will take its own position and now if i scroll the page you can see the fixed one is still at its own position but now we want that we need to use a position sticky so what i will do i will create uh, on nav bar i will give a position which will be sticky sorry which will be sticky okay and when i give position sticky and you can see that when i scroll the page nothing is happening everything is same as it was looking before so that means when you give a position sticky it will behave exactly same as position relative because position relative also behaves the same way you give a position relative and nothing happens to it but same way position sticky also get four properties which is the top left bottom right and what i'm going to do i'm going to give a top of zero pixel and i'll save it and now you will notice that when i scroll my 
page and the top of the navigation bar becomes zero, it will stick on the screen. And this is the position sticky. It's, it's very good and it's very useful because Usually we have that our navigation bar should be stick on the top and then the remaining page should get scroll. So by default, the position sticky will behave as a relative. And then once it reaches to its position, which is I have given a top of zero. So once it is reaches to the top zero, it's going to have a position fixed to it. All right, so this was position sticky. So let me reiterate all the positions which we have seen. The first one was the position static, which is applied by default to every element. And there is nothing changed when we apply a position static. The next one we see is position relative. So when you give a position relative, you get four additional properties, not only for the position relative, it's all for the relative absolute sticky fixed. So when you have a position relative, then it moves from its position based on the top left bottom right values you provide it. And it also overflows the other elements. The third one is the position absolute and position absolute always work in the context with the position relative to its parent. And after that, we saw the position fixed, which will be fixed on the screen irrespective whether you scroll your page or not, it will always be visible at that position. And the last one was the position sticky. So position sticky behave as a relative, but once it reaches its top zero or bottom zero or any of the uh, position values, then it behaves like a position fixed. So these were all the CSS positions. I hope you understood the positions very well. And now it will be very easy for you to apply the positions on your projects. So that's all was for the CSS positions. I hope you like this video and a thumbs up is appreciated. Also, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video and have a good day and good night. Thank you. Thanks for watching.